and thank you all for being here. Um, I'm really excited to give this presentation. Um, I really enjoy doing these webinars and we've gotten some really good feedback on the webinars in the past. Um, as Jenny said, the survey is going to come out afterwards tomorrow and I highly recommend um, he uh, heading out to that survey and giving your feedback, whether or not it was helpful to you, how it could have been more helpful or any other topics that you want us to cover in the future. Um, we really enjoy taking these opportunities to, to meet with you all and give this information and, and um, try to take it really seriously. So um, thank you all for, for joining us here today. Um, I've done this presentation in the past. What, well, actually, you know what? Let me start actually where I have my first slide. Um, my name's Scott Maitland. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the chief of staff for the department. Um, I started as a programmer back in 2014 and I left the department uh, about 18 months later, came back a few years after that to serve as IS division director. Um, and I've been doing that for some time and um, uh, finally was able to um, convince somebody that uh, the job was worth having. And uh, we'll talk about that here in just a minute, but now I'm just chief of staff um, and uh, really excited about where we are going with Gateway and where things are moving um, with the department as a whole. Um, with that said, oh, well, um, before I move on, uh, my contact information is there at the bottom. Uh, if you ever have any need to reach out to me, please don't hesitate. Um, I try to stay close to the phone here um, at my desk when possible um, and answer it whenever I can or respond to messages as soon as I can. So um, I'm really, uh, really excited or um, interested in any feedback you might have. And please feel free to reach out to me with questions or feedback or anything I can help with. So with that said, let's talk about what we want to talk about today. Um, I mentioned that um, we have a new IS and uh, data division director. Um, I'd like to introduce him to you all here today and, and give him a few opportunities to speak with you. Um, someone had asked me while I was out in the community about, um, about a, a brief overview of Gateway Basics. And so I'm going to take the, today as an opportunity to go over that and to talk about some of the standard components that you'll see throughout Gateway and how um, they're used you know, consistently throughout various applications. Um, and we'll talk about a little, a little bit more of that when we get to that point. I always like to take an opportunity to talk about gateway support because that's such an important interaction that we have with all of you um, about how we can help you better about what it is that you can provide us to help us get those uh, requests turned around quicker and, and faster than, uh, than, than we otherwise would be able to. Uh, and then at the end, I want to do a quick demonstration of one of the new applications that we're going to be launching here soon that um, impacts almost everybody. And um, I'm excited to talk about that and to show that off to all of you. Uh, but before we get to all of those things, the first thing I want to do is introduce you to Josh Jacobowski. Josh is our new IS Division Director and Data Division Director. And um, I'm really excited that he's on board. He's bringing a lot of, uh, a lot of state government experience to DLGF and back at DLGF after uh, a little hiatus and Josh why don't you unmute and tell the people a little bit about yourself. Great thanks Scott. Uh, good afternoon everybody and uh, yeah thanks again Scott for introducing me and uh, building me into this webinar. I really appreciate the opportunity here um, serving as the new data analysis uh, and information systems director or as we just kind of call it internally data and IS. Uh, I'm really excited about this opportunity uh, and working with the, the department. I think we've got a, a great future ahead of us here. Uh, so just letting everybody know I started about a month ago. Uh, I had heard the term before or heard the phrase before drinking from a fire hose, but I don't think I ever really appreciated it uh, except for maybe this past month. I've, I've learned a lot here in this new position. Um, it's I'm really enjoying it and I've got some great mentors in place who are, who are teaching me a lot about the position and, and a great team that I'm working with as well. Scott obviously was the uh, IS director there for a number of years. His office is right next to mine. He's been a great mentor. I'm trying to not pepper him with questions all day, but um, he, he, he's a huge help to me learning this position. I've also been working uh, pretty closely with James Johnson. Uh, he's not at the department anymore. He left for a great opportunity over at LSA. Uh, that's Leg Legislative Services Agency. Uh, really happy for him, uh, but he's very accessible to me and, and I've been able to reach out to him and 
and get his take on a number of things. He's been he's been great helping me uh, get settled into this position. I want to also give a shout out to my uh, my teams, my my data team and my IS team. Uh, we have some new data analysis employees uh, that started this summer. They've been doing terrific work for me uh, this past month, uh, and I've got a really strong IS team in here as well. Uh, I, just a lot of a great wealth of talent and experience I can tap into there with these teams that we already have in place. Uh, as you can probably see up on the screen, if you've been reading that at all, I previously served as the uh, financial analyst and controller here at the Department of Local Government Finance. Um, that position holds a number of responsibilities, but what I would say is kind of the, the chief one, and one of the most important ones is making sure that we are uh, maintaining the, the state side finances aspect of our agency and our, our internal budget and, and kind of working around with all the different divisions and making sure that all of their needs are set. Um, that working in that capacity, working in that job really enabled me to gain a strong understanding of the internal operations here within DLGF, you know, how the uh, what the assessment team does and, and how that gets handed off to budget at, at some point in the year and then budget hands it back to assessment and so on and so forth and that cycle that goes on. And I in that position, I also learned a lot about how data and IS are really kind of the glue that holds that together and, and helps with those handoffs and, and really works in that support role for the department. And it's something that very much interested me and I'm very excited to be uh, be in this play, position right now. Um, really happy with the work that's been done so far by my teams uh, this past month. Very much looking forward to uh, the work that we're going to be doing and uh, supporting not only the department, but each of the local units as well. So um, really excited about this opportunity. Uh, really looking forward to the future here at DLGF. Thanks, Josh. We are also very excited to have you and uh, looking forward to everything as well. You'll see Josh out and about at some of the conferences and things of that uh, nature as we um, as we get him integrated and and uh, back down to a drinking fountain instead of that fire hose. But um, Josh is going to do great work here. I'm really excited about that. And um, and I think you all will really enjoy working with him. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, Gateway Basics. And what I want to do here is really take us um, to the point where almost uh, the level that we would do at something like a new, newly elected official level. And um, the point of this is not to give you detailed information about any one particular application or go through and train you on how to use the budget application or additional appropriations, but to give you some sense of those common things that when you see them, you can think back to other applications and think, oh, that's how it works in the budget application. I bet on the additional appropriations application it works similarly. And so if we can build that foundation of standard components that uh, we try to use throughout Gateway. Um, I hope that it can help you um, understand what we're trying to convey to you in the design of these applications and, um, and, and help you um, understand exactly what's expected as you go through. So the, the first question to ask about Gateway is just what is it? And what you'll see here on the screen is sort of the, um, the blurb that we have at the bottom of Gateway that describes how we kicked it off and, and where we are with it. Um, I, I really wanted to put this on here for no other reason than to point out the Indiana Business Research Center, who is a, a great partner with us in Gateway. Um, they uh, have been with us all along and, and uh, continue to help support uh, not just DLGF, but all the agencies on Gateway and, and do a significant amount of work to make sure that this application is as um, as efficient as it can be, as um, as as high performing as it can be, and um, um, and as available as it can be. So, um, this this is sort of that um, that uh, public way of describing Gateway, if you will. But when I think of Gateway, I sort of think of it as as serving three main functions, right? It's it first for local officials. It's it's meant to be uh, a way to increase efficiency for the communication channel between DLGF and the local governments, and so it's meant to provide a quick and efficient submission uh, portal for various state agencies, so that you can have one sort of uh, portal or one entry point to local government. The second function that Gateway performs is 
it it can act as an automated feature for state agencies who are taking that data you're sending us and we can either immediately post it so that it's publicly available. We can do an analysis on it or do a validation on it, and we can very quickly turn that around and give you feedback on that information if you need it so that you can make uh, additional decisions on that, whether that means you need to make changes or whether it means that you know something's outside of some threshold that you expected or, or whatever it is. The final and, and one of the more important uh, features of Gateway is that it, it serves as a centralized hub of data, of local government data for the entire state of Indiana. And trust me when I tell you that we get um, nationwide requests for the data that comes through Gateway every single week. Every single week we're talking with people from universities, we're talking with very large organizations that you've heard of like uh, Standard & Poor's, we're talking to uh, people from large universities that are doing research on this, that are doing master's theses on it, think tanks in Washington, D.C., uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, the data that is available on Gateway is definitely used and is definitely important to our communities. Um, with that said, if we talk about Gateway Basics, I think we should start by saying where it is. So how do we get to Gateway? And uh, gateway.ifionline.org is the sort of front door to Gateway. But if you ever forget that, you can come to DLGF's website, which is uh, listed there as well. And we've got a nice big green banner at the top that says, um, uh, you know, Gateway or Indiana Gateway. And you can click Learn More and it'll take you right there. Um, there's a local official login button in the top right of Gateway that we'll talk about today because we're going to talk a little bit about that logged in side. Um, and if you that's how you log in, but if you don't have an account, it's also how you request an account. So go ahead and click that same local official link. And then there's a, a link below the two text boxes that says request authorization to access gateway. That'll get you squared away. It'll ask you a couple of questions about who you are, what units you're associated with, which applications you want to access, et cetera. And then somebody will get that and we'll set you up with uh, gateway access. This is a screenshot right here of, of the front door of Gateway that I was just mentioning, the, the URL listed there at the top, and then that local officials login here button over there on the top right. Before we sort of click into that button and move into the logged in side of Gateway, I do want to point out the public side of Gateway, um, and you can see those mainly in these areas right here. So the six big uh, pictures that you see across the bottom, those are sort of the featured reports, if you will, um, that we have in Gateway. But if you click that report search button that's up at the top that is uh, highlighted in red, there are hundreds and I truly mean hundreds of reports available to you up there. The Gateway presentation that we did last year had a uh, we went pretty well um, into the weeds on some of those reports some of the things that you can do on those reports and how to interact with that report builder. Um, if you're interested in the public reports at all, I highly recommend that, um, that presentation and then also just spending some time in the report search section uh, to see what's available. Um, if for some reason the way that we've sliced and diced the data doesn't, um, doesn't work for you or isn't, uh, isn't what you need and you want access to the raw data, we are always expanding the raw data sets that we have available, and uh, that is in that download section there across the top. And so if you ever want full data sets, for instance, I think we have the full Form 22 data set available under there. Uh, for some reason you wanted to look at that statewide, you're more than welcome to go download that um, and, see, and, and get the data so that you can do whatever it is that you want to do. So if we were to log into Gateway, um, we would see this right here. And this is the, the sort of landing page for local officials. And what you'll see is a lot of information here. And I wanna focus on a couple of different things. So let's start with focusing on each of these sections. Each of these sections represents a different state agency that has applications in Gateway. And so in that top left with the green banner, of course, is DLGF. And then I think most frequently people then also interact with the State Board of Accounts and they're in the top right. 
And then um, not everybody, but some of you are probably interacting with um, the workforce development or BMV, and then even fewer probably with the Gaming Commission and then um, the schools with uh, with uh, with Herb. So um, what I want to point out here is is that there are six agencies that represent Gateway or that are, are associated with Gateway, I should say. And so every now and then someone will send a question in. The one that we always get is, hey, I couldn't figure out how to do my monthly engagement report. And if you'll notice, you see monthly engagement report is the third option on the right hand side under State Board of Accounts. When we send you to State Board of Accounts, when you send that in, it's not because we um, we don't want to help you or we don't want to um, associate with that application. It's just State Board of Accounts is the right person, is the right group and the experts on that particular application. And so if you're ever confused about who you need to contact about which application, uh, this is a good page to, to refer to because it uh, it helps sort of um, map it out, if you will. Um, the next thing I want to point out on this page is that on the right hand side of each of these tables is a deadline column. And for the applications, that it's very obvious what the deadline is, for instance, our assessor report deadline right now at March 31st or the economic development reporting at September 30th. We just put those right there, but for things like budget where there's multiple deadlines or it depends on what kind of a unit you are, there's a little bit more information if you click that detailed button that allows you to go and get a little bit more information about what it is that we're expecting of, of the, uh, expecting to happen within this application and, and under what uh, timeframes. Um, at the top of this page, I do want to point out one more sort of thing that is helpful to you. That's the user guides right here. Um, this gray box, this header here that goes across the top should be available across the entirety of Gateway. Um, uh, once we zoom into an application, it'll sort of shift to the right, but it's all the same links. And um, that user guide uh, link there is particularly helpful because um, for almost all of our applications, we have a PDF guide on, on what the proper sort of workflow is through each of these applications. What it is you need to do in order to go from A to B, and then all B all the way down to Z. And so if you ever have questions, I would recommend using the user guide first, just because your answer is likely in there. If it's about an error message or something that you're receiving, um, that might be um, that might not show up in the user guide, but if you're just not sure how you accomplish something in the application, um, the user guide would be a good first place to start. So if we were to click into one of these applications, and this next screen here is if I, as if I had clicked into the data entry for CNAV and Form 22 application. If we come in here, you're going to see something like this almost in almost all of our applications. And the reason for that is almost all of our applications are unit specific. And so we'll have this tab right here that shows what units are available for you to interact with. Now, in this case, um, it's pretty unlikely that someone would have the set of access that is shown on the screen here, but this is just a, a, um, a dev environment, a testing environment that I have access to. And so I want to point out a few things here. The first is, as you can see, I highlighted Elkhart County. And the reason I did that is just to show you that that itself is a link and something that you can click on. And that's how you tell Gateway, I want to interact with Elkhart County data. The next is, is that sometimes people interact with, uh, they get into these units and then they don't have available to them the features that they thought they should have. Hey, I thought I should be able to upload or I should be able to adjust these numbers. Go back to this page and look at that user role on the far right hand side. Uh, make sure that it's showing what you expect it to show. The three user roles on Gateway are submitter, uh, editor, and view only. And so depending on what you're trying to do, you need a certain level of access. The last thing that I will point out on this particular screen is the year drop down at the top. And the reason I point that out is that it's infrequent that people want to go back and look at previous data for more than maybe one year back or something to that effect. But if you do, uh, this is where you'll go ahead and you'll change that. Those drop downs will change on their own. We'll update them when an application becomes ready for the new year. Uh, 
But if you ever want to go back and look at something previous, you have to do it before you actually get into the application and that you would do that right here. All right, so now we're deep into the application or we're, we're into it, it itself. And what I want to point out is this highlighted section across the top here. This highlighted section are, they're called breadcrumbs. And um, they're not as common on the internet anymore, but they used to be pretty common. And, and the reason for that is it allows you to navigate through the application without having to hit next. If I want to go from step one to step five, I should be able to do that in one click as opposed to four clicks to go from one to the other. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about these breadcrumbs later, but I wanted to point out that we try to use these consistently throughout the uh, throughout Gateway so that you are able to navigate your way through as efficiently as possible. Each of these things are links and you'll see that the step one is bolded and not a link and that's just because that's the page that you're on right now. Uh, if you were to click on four, step one would become a link and step four would, uh, would go away. The last thing I want to mention here on sort of Gateway Basics is this idea of form signature. This is our sort of standard form signature block. And um, what you'll need to do is fill out your name, your title, and then use the pin that we uh, that we gave you. And then on the far right hand side, you want to click that sign and date form. Once you've done that, you're then able to submit your paperwork. And so always remember that if you're signing it, that doesn't automatically mean that you're also submitting it. Um, that's that there's two different steps there. And so just make sure on the budget form, for instance, you have to sign them before they become quote ready to submit. And so that's always a, a learning curve for a lot of people who are new with it. Um, the signing and the submitting are two different steps. I am going to pause right here, grab a drink of water, and then if anybody's got any questions about anything I've gone over to this point, please don't hesitate to ask, throw it in the chat. Let me know what it is um, that you've got questions on and, and we can review that right now before we get too far away from it. All righty, you guys are being shy, that's OK. Um, let's go ahead and move on. We'll move on to um, support best practices. I, I always put this up because I always um, I look through tickets every now and then and um, a lot of you are really good at this, but um, we can get better. And what we're trying to do here is just um, try to find a way to, to get your support requests fulfilled as soon as possible. And so first of all, um, support at dlgf.in.gov is the uh, is the support hotline, if you will. If you email that, them, it will create a ticket, and that's how we will interact with you is to go back and forth via email. The three things that I always try to tell people is if you have an error message on the screen, whether that be a red text, a uh, little, you know, SDF error that says whatever, or if it's one of those big, ugly yellow pages with a lot of what looks like code in it, um, no matter what it is, always include that in a, in a support message. If, if you just send us a support saying, I got an error on my CNAV submission and I don't know what to do, I don't either because I don't know what your error was. And so I need to know what your error was in order uh, to help you. And so please always send your error messages anytime uh, you, um, you get them. You know, we get people who will sometimes they'll just print their screen and they'll write on a on a piece of paper and then they'll scan it back in and send that to us. And you know, that's you know not um, you know not for everybody, but at the same time, you know, hey, they're communicating really effectively what it is they're expecting to see and what it is that they are seeing. And so um, we always want to understand the user experience as best we can. Um, and that guides us to number two as well, which is that some of us have different names for the same things in Gateway. Some of us call it the 16 line statement. Uh, some of us call it the 4B. Some people call it the revenue page and some people call it, uh, I always forget if it's form one or form two, but nonetheless, 
if you include the URL of the page that you're on when you send a support ticket, that helps guarantee that we know exactly what you're talking about. And in that same vein, if you include those breadcrumbs as well that we talked about earlier, then I also know exactly what it is that you're uh, where you're stuck. Um, it, it's not uncommon for people that you know say they're on the form three, but they really mean they're on the form four. And um, you know that that takes time, and, and sometimes we don't have a ton of time to get these things resolved and turned around before you've got a meeting that evening, or you've got to get something submitted before somebody walks out the door on vacation. And so uh, the more you can help us make sure we're understanding where you are in Gateway and what it is you're seeing, uh, the better we can understand your experience and get you help. The last thing I'll say is, is that um, if you're dealing with something with assessment, add your assessment field rep. If you're dealing with something with budget, add your budget field rep. They might not know the answer, but uh, they, they might, they, you might not be the only person who's seen this since they might have some help for you, or at the very least, they're, they're aware. And I think that that's helpful to them. So um, go ahead and copy them on any requests that you see uh, or have, and, uh, and, and that's, that's helpful to all of us. <clears throat> I always tell people support is a first come first serve basis. We don't have guaranteed uh, service level agreements. We do have ones that we hold ourselves to internally, but as we get closer to deadlines, we get a dramatic increase in the amount of support requests that come in, which means that if you're waiting until the morning of the deadline to get something submitted and you encounter an error at that time, odds are I'm not gonna be able to, to get a response out to you before the end of the day and that deadline closes. And so I know it's not always possible to work ahead and to work uh, you know, on time, uh, ahead of time in order to get some things submitted. But even when you when you can, you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping those other people who can't. And so please work ahead of time, find those problems, find those errors so that we can help get you across the finish line uh, without any problems. Um, it, we really don't wanna be the reason that anybody uh, misses a deadline, um, but if, if we can't get to the ticket before the deadline, um, we're not gonna ask our support team to do anything um, absurd like stay overnight in order to help get these things done. We've, we've got plenty of time ahead of time most often to, to resolve these things. So let's get them in early. And as Wes says, early and often on all of the stuff and, and we'll, we'll keep moving forward. The last thing I wanna mention here on Gateway uh, Support is um, are these two help pages. Um, these two help pages are on the public side of Gateway. You don't need a, an account to access them. Um, it's a glossary and it's just a, a basic help page that helps describe who you need to reach out to for various different things. There's a lot of really good, um, inf but a lot of good information on both of these pages. Um, and a lot of the things that I went through today are described in a little bit more detail on these pages. There's some acronyms that I might have used along the way that if you don't know what they are, they might have been defined in that glossary. If you find yourself looking for a term that you think we ought to add to the glossary, please email me and we'll get it added. Um, but um, I just wanted to point these out because they are on Gateway and um, and they're helpful and, and, and you, might, um, uh, you might find yourself uh, needing them at some point. Uh, so again, I'm going to take a quick uh, break here just to wait for any questions that came in. Anything else that I can um, talk about as far as gateway support or um, or gateway in general before we move on to the, the next uh, agenda item here? I have gotten a few. This is Jenny from the DLGF. I have gotten a few reports that some people may not be able to access the Q&A uh, chat feature. If that is the case uh, for you, please send Scott or I your questions and we'll be happy to answer those um, either during the webinar or following the webinar. So we do um, appreciate those questions and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks, Jenny. I don't see any so far. So I will go ahead and, and just keep uh, keep moving forward. So the next thing I want to talk about is a new gateway application that I hope that you're excited about because I am. 
um, and that is uh, a gateway application centered around LDAs. The current LDA process um, allows for submitters the ability um, to allow staff members to edit data on their behalf. It's unit or application specific right now, and currently the forms are available on our website at that URL, and they're fillable PDFs that you then email back to the department. Um, th one of the issues with the current LDA process is that it's just, there's a lot of room for honest mistakes. And the department is required that uh, requires that those mistakes be remedied before we can actually provide access. If you um, give me the wrong email address, I need you to fill out a new LDA with the correct email address. If you say Newton County, but you mean Ohio County, then you know I I can't I need to have the correct information on the form um, in order for that to be able to be processed. Um, You'd be surprised how many of these we get um, on if we averaged it out across the entire year. Um, we get one about every other day, uh, but that's not quite um, accurate because the reality is, is that about 35 to 40 percent of our support volume during, I'll say budget time, which is right now from the end of July through the beginning of November is just these LDAs. And so we've heard from you that you want a more efficient way to handle these. You want a faster way for these to be processed um, and um, that you guys really liked the new additional application, additional appropriations application that um, that allowed for these to, um, to for those to be uh, submitted and approved immediately. And so we took a page from that. And we've got a new LDA application that we're really excited to share with you. And I want to go through some of the big main features of it right now. And so what you're looking at right now is sort of the home page of the LDA application. And um, there's three main tabs here that we're going to go through. The first is this request access tab that I have outlined in red. If we go into there, there's sort of five options available to you. The one that's outlined in red we'll dive into first, but that's the create LDA application and uh, LDA application. That will allow you to fill out an LDA and send it to the person who is the submitter for that unit for them to review and to accept or decline. Um, let's jump into that real quick. So we tried to take the meaningful and the important pieces of the LDA form and distill it down into its most basic uh, uh, format here. And so we tried to make it as simple as possible. Just put your name in there. We already have your email address, so we'll send that along with it. Tell me the county, the unit type, and the unit that you want to, to, to uh, have it access to. And what we try to do is, not, not try, we have, um, is we as you go through those we're only going to show you the units of that unit type in that county so if you're in um, Carroll County we're not going to show you um, Indianapolis Public Schools if you say Carroll County Schools right and so uh, we try to make it as um, as easy as possible for you so that those honest mistakes that we talked about are not possible then you'll see here that you can select a very select an application and will only allow you to select the applications that associate with that unit and then the permission types that you're allowed to request you then submit the uh, lda and it's off to the person who has submit access to then approve to give you access the next thing on that same page is you can see all of your pending lda requests so in this case what we're looking at is a Allen County read only budget LDA. If I want to, I can go in and, and edit that before it's been approved. I can look at it or I can just delete it and say I don't need this anymore. The other ones are all the same and there's no data in here right now, but you can see if you have any currently currently approved LDAs, any LDAs that were rejected or any LDAs that expired. We go back out to the main page. We're able to look at the provide access tab. And this is sort of the opposite side of that same coin. If instead of asking for the permission, if I just want to give the, the access to somebody else because I already have it, well, then we can do something very similar. And so you can see here, I can see what my existing LDAs already are that, uh, that exist, or I can create a new one. And that's what that big blue button at the top is about. And again, 
Um, I'm going to put who I want to de uh, delegate access to, what their name is. I'm going to gateway is going to validate that that email per that email address already has a gateway account, and then it's only going to allow you to delegate roles that you have the authority to delegate. So again, trying to eliminate the honest mistakes. So in this case, this user only has access to units in Adams, Bartholomew, and Dubois County. They'll then only see, once I click Adams County, for instance, well, maybe I only have solid waste management district um, access there, so it'll show me special unit type, and then I'll go to the unit and it'll allow me to select that unit. Furthermore, the application and the permission are just the same thing, and that will allow you to go through those um, uh, with only the th give those things only that you have access to give. And then finally, the name there at the bottom in order to um, to, to ensure that it's you. Then you'll click that uh, you agree and submit it, and then off it goes, and it's been automatically approved because as the submitter, um, you have access to give that person, um, uh, you have the authority to give that person access. The last thing I want to do is show the review access request, and um, this will be for anybody who has submit access that is able to, um, uh, to, to approve these. And so as you come in here, you can see you're able to search across any county or unit type that you'd like to search across, or you can see here who already has uh, pending LDAs in there. So in this case, um, this requester, Gateway1 at test.com is requesting read-only access for Bainbridge Township for the file transmission application. If I just click that big green button right there, it automatically goes and then Gateway1 test instantly has access to that. They don't have to wait on DLGF and they don't have to wait on us to, uh, to, to set that up. Um, this should cut out any of those times where you're, you know, in the evening or it's after hours or maybe on a weekend um, when DLGS not around uh, and you need to get somebody in the system as soon as you can to submit something. This should help you uh, accomplish that is the goal. So let's talk briefly about the timeline that we've got for this. So um, earlier today, I think we finished up testing um, on our side. Um, we might, um, we're going to talk internally about um, maybe getting a few of our um, external stakeholders, some of you, in there for some uh, for some beta testing. If you would like to be part of that beta testing, um, send Josh an email. His email address was earlier in the presentation. Um, and uh, we, we can get that set up so that we can make sure that it's uh, it's good. Once we do send the application live, we're going to start to phase out the paper process in favor of this new application. And then eventually all the existing paper LDAs will uh, be revoked and new LDAs will need to be created. Um, we'll do that over some time frame and we'll be sure to make sure uh, we will be sure to communicate that so that everybody knows what's happening and and we will do our very best not to do it around any deadlines so that it doesn't cause any um, any craziness uh, right there at the end, um, stressing anybody out. So that is the extent of our presentation today. We were expecting a few questions, so um, anybody have any questions uh, that that I can answer about anything? Really, doesn't have to be about the presentation topic. I'm I'm here. If you uh, if you have a question, I'm happy to answer it. Alrighty, well, I don't see any questions coming in. Jenny, do you want to um, sign us off? Maybe we can hang out for a few minutes afterwards, but give everybody the sort of closing information and, and then we'll hang out. Yes, thank you, Scott. Um, as Scott said, we will um, be, uh, we'll stay on here for a few more minutes. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat.
function if you have that available. If not, please feel free to email Scott or I, um, and we'll be happy to get those questions answered for you. Um, one of the other things is just a reminder that you will receive one hour of CE credit for this webinar. If you desire, you will self-report that. You will complete the CE form and either submit it to our office if you are an assessor, or if you're a different elected official and you need the CE hour, you will report that to your reporting body or your governing body, um, whoever collects that information. Um, we will send out an email tomorrow. It will include the video, the PowerPoint, the survey, and the CE form. So take a look at those. Feel free to share this with other staff members that you may have in the office that you find would be have a benefit to hearing this information. Um, and then we will send out the information about about the LDA process when it's available. Um, we'll send it out in a memo and an email so you will know when that is available. Um, we will allow plenty of time for everybody to get situated as they um, move into that new application. So I want to thank Scott and Josh for presenting today. Um, and if you have any feedback for webinars for 2023, please include that in the survey and we will consider those as we're planning that um, this fall for uh, the 2023 webinar schedule. And again, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next month.